Okay, so the next thing in our algorithm is we need a uh, way for some floors to not be split, even if when they're not at their minimum dimensions yet. So you'll see in our, in our should split node function, we check to see what the orientation we're splitting at is, and then we get our floor length if it's horizontal, we get our floor width if it's vertical, and we check to see if floor length is greater than room min y and if or floor width is greater than room min x. And so basically what this will do is it will allow us to keep splitting until we have um, a floor node that is at its absolute minimum dimensions. But we want to be able to stop splitting earlier than that and we want to do so randomly. So let's first take care of the horizontal split. So just after the floor length is gotten, we're going to um, create a parameter that will be like the percent chance of being split. So this will be a float. We're going to say percent chance of split. We're going to set this equal to, and we're going to say floor length divided by floor grid size x. And so the floor length is how long it is in the y direction, and the floor grid size, actually it's going to be floor grid size y, because we're measuring in the y direction. But one thing to, note, to notice is these are both integers, and integer division is going to give us a truncated result. So what we want is a float, and we don't want to just take the int divided by int and then convert that result to a float because it's going to be truncated. What we want is to perform the division onto float, ver uh, float values. And we can simply do a C style cast like this. Putting float in parentheses before it will convert this to a float. And we can do the same thing here. So this will actually convert these to floats and C style casts are to be used with caution. If you have um, some sort of object type and you're casting it to another type, it's going to cast it no matter what. But with an integer and a float value, you're pretty safe doing that. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and do that. So casting a floor length um, integer into a float and then dividing by floor grid size y cast it into a float will give us a float value and that's going to be some percentage. It's actually going to be a fraction from 0 to 1, 1 being like a 100% chance of split and 0 being a 0% chance of split. So that gives us a chance to split and this is basically uh, based on the size of the floor node. Now we need to actually make the random determination like a dice roll. So let's do float and let's call this dice roll. And let's say f math, f rand range. This time we're doing f rand range because it's using floats. And we're going to do from 0 to 1. So it'll be from 0.f to 1.f. And um, then we can simply um, determine whether we should splo uh, split or not. So we're going to say if dice roll is greater than percent chance of split, well, then we're going to return false because we don't want to split. So what is this doing? It's, it's taking this, which is the percentage or the fraction of the overall floor. So if we have this as our floor, we're going to take our, the uh, size of the node we're splitting. We're going to get that length. Actually, it's in the y direction, so it would be um, this way. So say this, this square here is the node. We're going to take this length divided by the total length. And that gives us the percentage or the fraction of the total length. And so the smaller this value, the less likely it is to be split and the larger it is, the more likely. So if it's still really big, you have a pretty good chance of being split, but there's still a slight chance that it won't be slit, is split as long as it's not the first node A. Okay, so that gives us a fraction uh, percent chance of split. The dice roll is a random number between zero and one. As long as that number is equal to the percent chance of split or less, then we will be able to split. But if it's greater than, we will return false and we will not split. So that is how we can uh, 
choose randomly not to split and basically the size in the y direction affects that. And we're going to do the same thing in the x direction. We're going to say uh, int 32 percent chance of split. It's going to be f math, f rand range. And this is going to be from, <clears throat> it's going to be, pardon me, um, percent chance of split is going to be, oh, I'm sorry, this is, uh, this is not an f rand range. It's going to be a float casted from floor width divided by float casted from floor grid size x. And then we're going to get our random number. So int 32, dice roll, is f math, f rand range. And we're going to go from 0 to 1. And we're going to check if, and we're going to say dice roll is greater than percent chance of split return false. There we go. So we'll get out of the function if the dice roll is greater. Okay, so what this does is determines uh, a random number now of, of uh, randomly sized floor nodes. So, uh, we now have finished our splitting algorithm, and in the next video, we're going to be able to visualize it by drawing the grid. And so we're going to create a function to draw the grid, draw the floor nodes, and, um, and then we'll get to actually see what this looks like um, and, uh, you know, think about spawning some items in the floor nodes. Okay, so one important change that we need to make to should split node is if we take a look at this if check, if floor length is greater than room min y, we return true. And also, if floor width is greater than room min x, we return true. There's a slight problem with these. And the only reason they're currently working for us is because room min y and room min x are 1. This works if room min y and x are 1, but if they are larger than 1, this doesn't quite work as we expected. Now let, let me explain why for a second. So let's just say room min y, we're looking at the y here, and we're splitting horizontally. Let's say room min y is 1. Well, we're checking to see if the floor length here is at least greater than 1. So in other words, say it's 2, and that still satisfies the requirement that it has to be greater than room min y because room min y is 1. So let's say it's 2. Here we have a small room, and we're, we're still able to split it because we can select a point that will split this and still give us two rooms that are not smaller than room min y. They both at least have a, uh, a space of 1 here in the y direction. Where this breaks down, however, is when room min y is greater than 1. Let's say room min y is 2. Well, in that case, we don't ever want to split a room to where any of the smaller rooms are uh, smaller than 2. Because if room min y is 2, then we should never have any rooms smaller than that minimum. So if this is two grid squares here and here, then that means floor length being greater than room min y uh, could in fact fail because let's just say here we have, let's just say room min y is five, okay? Five here, five here. Well, if room min y is five and we have a small, uh, a small rectangle here. Let's, let's make a uh, sort of a, a little bit bigger one. And let's just say that room min y is 5, right? And let's just say that the, the y here, the y space for this one, is 6. So that being said, we have 6 grid spaces. We have 1 here, 2, 3, 4, five and six. Well, floor length is greater than room min y because room min y is five. Room min y being five means that, you know, from here, basically, this room min y being five, it's, it's, uh, um, it's only going to, basically it will result in us splitting here uh, 
at least one space, uh, one of these grid points will be split, and one of the halves of this will be smaller than the room min y, right? So if room min y is five, and we have a uh, a floor length of six, then we're saying true. Yes, we should split it, and we will split somewhere, and we will get a room with a uh, y space that is smaller than the room min y. So how do we fix this? Well, we can't just say floor length should be greater than room min y. It should be, what it should be, is greater than or equal to twice room min y. Why? Because if we split this, we want at least both sides, uh, both small nodes, to be at least room min y or bigger. So if uh, room min y is five, then right here, this would have to be five and this would have to be five in order to split this in half and these both be at least room min y in the y direction. So instead of floor length is greater than uh, room min y, we want to say greater than or equal to twice room min y. And down here for floor width greater than room min x, we want to say greater than or equal to twice room min x. And that way, we will always split to where we have a, a room size that is no smaller than the minimum. It is never going to be smaller than room min y in the y direction, and it'll never be smaller than room min x in the x direction. If it's not big enough to split and still have two halves that are at least room min y or room min x, then it will not return true because this if check will fail. So that's an important uh, uh, detail that we needed to fix there, uh, and, and this will um, matter when room min y is larger than 1. If room min y is 1, it doesn't matter, but if it's anything other than 1, then it does matter.